Mike Bond here with Mr. Big John McCarthy, who is the voice of Bellator, calling a doubleheader this weekend down in Connecticut. I'll start with Friday's card. Very interesting lineup. We got a rematch in the main event. Roy Nelson fighting Frank Mir. Uh, this seems like maybe a bit of a do or die for both guys. Frank Mir, four fight losing skid. Roy, three. What is at stake here, in your opinion? I, I actually think you're exactly right. I think both of them absolutely need a win. And so we know one guy is going to come out with that win. The question is, how do you get the win? And they both have their ways of coming out on top. You know, Roy's always got that big right hand. Roy, but Frank knows it, and Frank has worked out with Roy in the past, fought him in the past, grappled with him, trained with him. So he's going to be pretty good at neutralizing that hand for some of the fight. You can't, you can't neutralize it for the whole thing. But he's got you know, his ways of winning this thing. He needs to get on top of Roy. He needs to make Roy work. He needs to get in clinch situations where he elevates that heart rate. So Roy doesn't have that freedom of movement and the ability to dictate the pace. Frank does that, Frank can come out with a win. So both guys can win. I honestly think this is going to be a, a much better fight than people are saying based upon they both need this win. they got to go after it. You know, it's, it's interesting too. I mean, the first time they fought, I feel like that's when Frank's striking really started to come into its own, and people started like noticed change. how like well he was doing in that fight. Roy obviously took all the shots. Um, do you think Frank's gonna go to a similar approach, or do you think maybe you know, given the age, the miles that have accumulated since then, all that kind of stuff, he's gonna have to approach the fight differently? Well, one of the things you know that you know, I've been around Frank a lot, and Frank's been in charge of his training a lot, and I know that he has taken a step back and let some other people come in and start to do some especially his strength and conditioning, and he's been putting a lot of time and effort into that. He's been on the mats rolling a lot now, and all of that training is something that you, know, you, you tend, as you get older, you gotta maintain it a little bit differently because you can get overtrained, but you gotta hit those points, and he's been hitting those points, so he's gonna come in as, as in good a condition as he's been in a while. Roy's always, you know, people can look at Roy and say, oh, you know, he, he's got a belly. Roy's always training. Roy is, Roy is always in the gym. Roy is always getting himself prepared. And Roy's just going to come to fight. So both of them have their ways of winning the fight. Obviously, I think they're different. I think Roy being on top of Frank, it's okay. Frank's okay because Frank off of his back is better than Roy off of his back. But, you know, it's got to be a situation where if Frank ends up underneath Roy, he has got to open up. He has got to go for things. He cannot sit, allowing him to be in guard and just punch away at him, he's going to end up losing the fight. Yeah, very interesting high stakes there. Uh, anything else that's really captured your interest on the Friday card? We've got Phil Davis back, Ed Ruth, Jake Hager well, again fighting. I you know, you know those storylines are really fascinating. I love the Ed Ruth versus Jason Jackson matchup. We got Jason Jackson's a guy that doesn't, he's, he's always been you know hovering on the edge. And he's a good fighter, and he gets in those fights that are going to put him over that that, up to that next step and something bad happens to him. He twists his ankle and goes down or something and so it's going to be interesting to see him come out. Ed likes to stand up and trade hands. He's got a huge reach for a welterweight but Jason is you know, in the stand up. That's going to be an area that he is absolutely well suited to trade off with Ed Ruthen. Does Ed bring in his wrestling that he's so good at? You know, that's the area, if you look, he has a marked advantage over Jason Jackson in the wrestling. Submission-wise, I think they're both about the same. So the real question for me in that is, if Jason can keep this fight on the feet and make Ed want to exchange, what's, which Ed tends to like to do, this is, a, this is anyone's fight. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. And Saturday, uh, we'll get to that now, of course, top of the card. We'll talk about the Grand Prix finale in a second. Okay. Uh, just had to change the main card, actually. Sabaho Masi out of the co-main event against Paul Daly. It's now uh, Saad Awad stepping in, fighting Paul Daly, 175 catch weight. Um, what does that say to you, someone like Saad Awad? I know you're a fan of him and his style and everything. To come in and fight Paul Daly on five days' notice, pretty amazing. Well, Saad Awad, is, he's, a, he's crazy anyways. And he just had his his fight against Horiguchi where he had trained, you know, it wasn't that long ago, a couple of weeks, trained his butt off, made a mistake. He doesn't have to worry about those things with Paul Daly. He knows what Paul's going to do and he knows what he likes to do. So this is going to be that fight where someone is getting knocked out. And so you look and I go, well, I, I had the same thing written down for my fight with Homasi. Someone's going to sleep. Homasi likes to stand and set his feet and throw big shots we all know what paul brings and when paul you know you can 
look at the way Paul does things. His left hook is the best in MMA, bar none. No one throws a left hook better than Paul Daly. And so Syed needs to be sure to be careful of that left hook. Watch the right hand, move your feet a lot. It's going to be interesting seeing him go up in weight from 155 to 170. I think it's a good thing for him. He's got a big frame. I think he's going to feel really good. He's not going to have to cut hardly any weight. And this is going to be a fun fight for the fans to watch. Before we get into the main event, anything else on Saturday's card jump out at you? I mean, we got Nick Newell back, uh, Ruben Van Roosmalen, uh, Minikov is back. Like, there, There's some very important fights on this card well, as well. Yeah, Von, Von Roosmalen is, you look, and I can't wait to watch Robin in his MMA uh, debut for Bellator. And he's just an incredible kickboxer that I got to work with in glory and stuff. And if he can just take that stand-up game and just bring in that little bit of wrestling defense that I know he's been working on, he's going to be fun to watch. You know, but the, the other one you're talking about, Nick Newell is a special athlete. He's fun. He's so good. And uh, just any time he's fighting, it's a feel-good situation where you go, man, you can't root against him. So... He's just a good guy. Yeah, I'm glad to see him getting another fight. I mean, he's wanted to be on a stage like this for so long, and now he's getting two Bellator fights in like two or so months, he so he must be happy. He deserves this. He is 16-2. and two. Okay, that's a good fighter. And, you know, a lot of people have been wary of Nick because he's got, you know, that disability as far as not having the lower part of his arm, but he doesn't look at it as a disability, so why are you? You know, give him the chance. That's all the man asked for is give me a chance. Let me prove myself. He did when he had the, we had the show in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. He went out there, put on a beautiful performance, and I am absolutely, you know, I love the fact that Bellator signed him. They signed him to a long contract, and he deserves it. Absolutely. And last but not least, Rory McDonald, Douglas Lima, the conclusion of this eight-man, $1 million welterweight Grand Prix. Uh, I think this, panning it out before the tournament started, I think this is more or less the ideal situation. I mean, that first fight was so great, and we just had a, now a great build, a great road back to it. Just how excited are you to see these guys brought it back? I, I'm thrilled. I know they can't be. They can sit there and say what they want, but they know, oh, this is going to hurt. You know, because both guys... Both guys are going to have to dig deep in this one. This is a fight when you are facing someone as good as Douglas Lima or Rory McDonald. You know you've got to have almost that perfect fight. You've got to be on, on point the entire time. And you know you're going to go through hard situations. There's going to be moments in this fight you are going to lose. Whoever you are. And you've just got to be mentally tough in those things. Just make it through it. Let me get to another spot and just build from that. So... I look at it, these are two of the best welterweights in the world, and to be able to just watch art as it's being made, because when those guys are fighting, it's art, like Robin was talking about, this is, you know, this is a fine painter, and these guys are creating this masterpiece in the cage. I can't wait for it to happen. Yeah, and it seems like right now Douglas Lee was really starting to come into his own, both fighting-wise, popularity-wise, recognition. It seems like recognition-wise is a big part. Yeah, because no one, no one ever gave Douglas the credit he deserved for how good of a fighter he is. You know? And a lot of it's because oh, he was fighting for Bellator, and it's like fighters know. You, know, you go to any fighter that fights in the top shows, they know. Oh, the top five guys there. I don't want to mess with them. Yes, I have to, but I don't want to. And that, that goes across the board. 100%. So it seems like, you know, there's a lot more solid things about Lima going into this fight. There's a lot more questions about Rory McDonald. Yes, I mean, this is. has been a weird half year for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, he had the whole seemingly retired thing, comes back, fights a few months later, beats Neiman Gracie. Here he is. Uh, I know he was very happy that he got an extra month after the birth of his child to not have to do this fight in September. What's your assessment on just where Rory McDonald is mentally right now? I think, you know, I think the Neiman Gracie fight showed us a lot. Because I'm being honest, after the John Fitch fight, I was like, I don't know if he wants to do this anymore. And if you're not 100% in, you shouldn't be in at all. Get out. And I, the you know Neiman Gracie was undefeated going that. And a lot of people could sit there and, and look and say, oh, you know he's not you know he's not as good. No, Neiman Gracie's good. His stand up has gotten really good. His ground game is fantastic. And if you're Rory, you've got to come away from that fight going, I'm good. I feel good about my performance. I had a very tough guy. I controlled a lot of that fight on the ground, on the feet. I put it to fight where I wanted. That's the performance that you want coming into this fight. Now, if you're Douglas Lima, you've got two finishes. That, 
that, that's making you feel pretty good too. But you can always turn it around if you're Rory and say, hey, I went through 10 hard rounds. I'm good. I'm ready. And Douglas Lima, I've been there before. I know what I need to do. And I just need to go out and do it. And I know you can't technically make a prediction or anything but because you're calling the fight. Um, but do you think... Interestingly enough, like best case scenario maybe would be for a Douglas Lima win here because then you get a trilogy, you, you get trilogy. you get all these options coming out of it. Yeah. You're, you're, it's always, I, I, I look at it, first off, I like both fighters, I love both fighters. I mean, Rory's a great person, Douglas is a great person. They're both phenomenal fighters, so my whole thing is when I watch them is, hey, I want them both to go out, perform to the best of their abilities, and no one get hurt, you know, and just be able to come back and do it again. In, a, in certain ways, yeah, I'd kind of like to see the trilogy kind of go because it's like, that's just such good fighting at such a high level. You want to see that all the time. But if, you know, if Rory beats Douglas a second time, he is making a statement that, hey, I'm the guy, I'm the best one here in Bellator at welterweight. As uh, Douglas Lima has run through everybody else. And uh, there's still some good matchups, you know. If Rory wins, you got matchups with like Lorenz Larkin. Amazov is sitting there in the wings, man. He's undefeated. I would love to see that. I think Amazov and Rory match up very well. And same with Douglas Lima. If Douglas Lima wins, you know, you got Amazov sitting there. There's all kinds of good things coming. Yeah, welterweight is great. And last thing I'll ask you before we get out of here, um, your gut feeling. Do we see between Roy McDonald and Douglas Lima, is it that same type of blood and guts, five round type of grueling fight? Or do you think whoever it is that wins is, can maybe get out of there you know, with a finish, something cleaner, quicker, that type of thing? I don't think that's ever going to happen in that fight. I'm just being honest. They're both so, the, you're talking about small percentage points that make differences in fights. And these guys are so close. I just don't see either fighter finishing the other. I see guys winning rounds and then having to come back and try to do that again in the next round, and I think the rounds are just going to go by. I do think this one's going to go to a judge's decision. Very interesting. Well, it all goes down. Bellator 231, Friday night, 232, Saturday night on zone. You can hear Big John call the fights. Really appreciate the time, John. Thank you very much.